And uh, we'll take a look at the, the series history. We talked about how far it goes back. Colgate has a tough time getting opponents to play them. That's how good they are in the non-conference schedule. The 174th meeting. Syracuse had won 54 in a row prior to last year. Colgate came to the Dome and won 100 to 85 on November 20th of last season. They hadn't won since 1962 and the Orange will start the scoring. Now how about that? I was three <laughs> when that happened. <laughs> I was still just somebody's distant thought at that point, Mike, back in 1962. <laughs> Very distant. Yeah. I was a headache. I was a young <laughs> headache at that point. Orange, a headache on defense there, poking that one away. Here's Mintz with the basketball right now. And the one thing at Syracuse, they played a lot of man in that first game against Lehigh, so let's see how they switch things up. Richardson pulls down the miss. Colgate, the traveling maroon. Spinning is Woodward. Cut off by the defending of Edwards. Plenty of time on the shot clock. That just grazed the front rim from Richardson. Couldn't find the range out of bounds, and that is Orange basketball. Well, there's the Hall of Famer. His 47th year as the head coach, and officially, Mike, if Syracuse wins tonight, that is win 1,000. He has been to that threshold, though, in the past. Yeah, he's at 1,100 in my mind at this point. I knew you were going to say that. In a lot of yeah. people's minds, and hopefully sanity will reign here <laughs> at some point in time, and that number will be rectified. But any way you look at it, just, you know, phenomenal, phenomenal numbers. Just has, has given his whole life to this community and this school. Second most all-time in wins in Division One behind Coach K with 1,202 and the most seasons at a current school, 47th, and certainly the most wins by any coach at his alma mater. At a power five, I don't know that you will see that again, ever. Naismith Hall of Famer back in 2005 and in 2003, National champions. Well, that was some couple of year run for him right in there with the national championship and then going to Springfield. Mintz will bring it up. You mentioned Bayheim as a student and player, walk on player in the Syracuse program, then an assistant coach and the head coach for almost a half century. Across the way, Matt Lengel is building. Quite a program at Colgate, and Coach Beheim has to admire what Lengel has done in his 12th season, Mike. Lengel is the all-time leader in wins in Colgate history with 178, and they have been to the championship game in their league five straight years. Yeah, they've, they've really ruled the Patriot, uh, Patriot League, going to the NCAA tournament four times, and uh, just has really built a culture of winning there, and it's... You know, the reason why Tucker Richardson came back, I mean, I'm sure he was a, he could have been a hot commodity in the portal if he wanted, but uh, such is how he feels about this program and this coach and the team. Colgate beat Navy in the Patriot League championship game a season ago. Those games are on the highest seed campus site. And so Colgate's had that home court advantage as Gerard's shot was challenged and missed. Raiders try to run it. Syracuse gets back defensively. We talked about that win last year. They put 100 points up against the Orange in that game. Edwards at the rim denies the shot. And that's what he does. He cleans up a lot of mistakes inside. Four blocks against Lehigh in his first game. Gerard for three. And that's what he does best. And I, I really think he, he's going to have a very, very good offensive year off the basketball. Career three, number 214 for Joe Girard. Senior out of Glens Falls, New York. Mintz grabs that one. Last year in that game against Colgate for the Orange, Girard had 27 points. That was a season high. His career high is 30. That came back in 2020. Three players to the deck for this one. Hell ball situation in the arrow favors Colgate. This is what happens to you. Not only the block, but you keep control of it, too, and that just springs the break. You see everybody compressed defensively, and a uh, little crossover creation off the dribble for Gerard that time. Got some space, got a good look. Syracuse has only played one game, Mike. That was 
Monday in a win at home against Lehigh 90 to 72 built a substantial halftime lead and shot 54 percent as a team in that game and 50 percent from beyond the arc as well to get win number one of coach Beheim's 47th season as the head coach soft bounce and it drops Tucker Richardson by far their main three point weapon Tom seven of 17 coming into this game the most attempts by anybody Mince in traffic hanging too strong back iron so like Mince has got the size to get in there and create and he has the he has the green light to do that hasn't shown the three point shot yet but he can get to the rim Raiders are two and one on the season they launch another three and it goes Lynch Daniels scraping the top of the dome and knocking it down and played in the first few games that uh, from Chapel Hill North Carolina Colgate had missed its first four three-point opportunities Gerard hit the court awkwardly he's wincing in pain at the other end it's Lynch Daniels again and the long rebound to number 11 for the orange Syracuse able to get 42 points in the paint in that win against Lehigh up and under Edwards was fouled on the play records was the closest Raider so we'll take a timeout early action first half Colgate and Syracuse warrior one it is time for tonight's Ford keys to the game with Mike Jaminski Oh, we talked about it before the game, Tom, and run it back for Colgate to get that win last year. Can they go back to back, uh, putting up 100 points again? And for Syracuse, really didn't have it under Jim Bay, I'm mostly zone. That's what you had to face. Now, playing some man to man, playing some zone, switching up. He says his zone is still his, his, his best defense. And for most of his 1,425 career games coached, that's what he has relied on. Edwards is at the free throw line. And that's right. Edwards got to the line a lot in that first game out. Eight of ten for him. But Colgate's got some guys up front. They have some size and some bodies they can throw at him. Edwards had 18 points on five of eight shooting against Lehigh. Also a member of the Patriot League. Edwards also had four blocks in that game. Trying to work on the block over the front rim and good for Muffet. Ryan Muffet a little size. He, well, he's also a three point threat as well. Not a high volume shooter. Edwards trying to back it on down. But they're digging in a little bit with Richardson. Uh, kind of a half double. And Mince. Got in a congested area and now Colgate trying to run off the turnover. Moffitt teeing up a three ball. Rattled it out. Brown tried to come over the top with it. Mince has it. Colgate's three of ten, but for the most part, you have to like the looks that they're getting at the basket. And remember last year, shots were not falling for them early, but uh, that changed <laughs> dramatically as the game wore on. Remember last year they shot 40% from beyond the arc, second in the nation, and they're going to get an easy two. Look like an easy two. Second effort, third effort, it finally goes down for records. I think Lynch Daniels was worried about defense coming in on him, and records was able to clean it up. Colgate did not give up on that play, and Syracuse did not get bodies back to get the rebound. Mince couldn't get the shot away. He'll try Edwards. In the paint. Comes up short. Now, last year, Colgate averaged about 10 made threes per game. And they shot 53% as a team from the floor. Not surprisingly, the number one seed at their Patriot League tournament, which they won. That was Moffat able to get the defender in the air. Contact and foul. That's going to be Edwards and his first. That's the thing. If, if they can get him in foul trouble, get that early second, uh, that'll be a, a big, big key for them. You know, we, we were talking about that. The you know, with that, with the Patriot League, the, the way their postseason is structured, 
the regular season means something because if you if you win the regular conference, you get to host the tournament all the way through. Get that home court advantage. And uh, certainly has served them well over the last five years. Samir Torrance has come into the game for the Orange. Gerard to the bench. Also coming out, Braden Smith, number two for Colgate, which has hosted that championship game in the Patriot League, Mike, four years in a row. And they've won the title two years in a row. They lost in the first round of the NCAA tournament last year to Wisconsin, 67-60, and the game was played in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Syracuse did not find the postseason last year, Mike, with its 16 and 17 record. Edwards able to gather and score. Nice interior feed. I mean, we talked about the big bodies Colgate has. Neither one of them are shot blockers per se. I mean, they've got to keep a keep you away from the basket. But if Edwards can catch in there, he can finish. Lynch Daniels, top of the backboard and in three. Don't look now, Mike. 16 to 8, 12 27 and rolling in the first half. Well, Colgate looks very, very comfortable offensively. And uh, here's the look on the prior possession. Nice little lob and catch. And the nice thing there is that he gathered himself and then went up strong. But just a little drive and pitch. This is again the team you have to close out on. You don't usually get that roll here, but. Uh, the three point shot three of nine now in the game for the Raiders. You know this is the thing to be said too. This is Colgate's fourth game. Maybe a little bit more of a rhythm a little farther along in game action than Syracuse. Thompson comes into the lineup for Colgate. Tonight is their fourth game in nine days to get the season started as Mince is short of the free throw. It's a long season in college basketball for these guys. I mean, start, we started doing games on the seventh. A beautiful back door. You know, you have to respect Richardson out on the perimeter, and he just took what the defense gave him. Jim Beheim with a quick timeout. How about the collaboration by the Raiders? Sliver of daylight. Woodward finds Richardson. 16 to 4 run. by the Fresh Market, voted number one best supermarket in America. I think you can see my old dormitory from that view, Mike, right there, the skyline of the Syracuse University campus. And inside the dome, a 16 to four run by Colgate. And a rile up the fans and beautiful play right here by the Raiders, Mike. Yeah, we talked about it with Tucker Richardson. You have to guard him number 15 up at the top and Judah Mintz number three as he goes out in the wing. You see him. He's looking at the ball rather than his man. Nice backdoor backdoor cut in uh, Jeff Woodward more wired as a, as a passer in that offense than as a scorer. That was a beautiful look he gave him right there. Some old school basketball from the Raiders. Gerard lining it up. That's another three. Nice to see that coming out of a timeout to get executed, get him a look, and uh, maybe get this crowd into the ball game. Things a little flat right now for Syracuse. Second three in the game for Gerard. It's Baker from the corner. Weak side Torrance. That play that we showed was a man to man. Syracuse coming out in the zone these last couple possessions. Torrance looking for an alleyway to the bucket. Well, couldn't go up and under. Well, Torrance uh, with Mintz and, uh, and Torrance. They got two guys who can attack the rim. Torrance got it back. Elevates off the glass. The tip over the top. Benny Williams. Sophomore from Bowie, Maryland. Out leaps everybody and taps it in for the orange. He's a terrific athlete. They want him to use that athleticism. And uh, he, he's a guy that really needs to step up this year. They need that wing player, need scoring and defense from him. He got the start in the game against Lehigh, Benny Williams. Only two points and three boards in 23 minutes of action. Averaged about two points and a rebound and a half a season ago. They're going to need bigger numbers from number 13 to contend in the ACC this year. Torrance fires away. 
Williams power dribble off the glass and it spins on down. You know, for, and for a guy like that, and we talked about it, he needs things like that to happen to give himself some confidence. You know, that bounce right to him. He gets the finish. Two consecutive baskets on offensive rebounds. Now he feels a little bit better about himself. Prior to that three, Syracuse was on a 7-0 run. Lynch Daniels trying to silence the crowd. A little maybe early. Whoa, whoa. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> you admire the confidence, yeah, certainly. Yeah, you might want to slow your roll a little bit. <laughs> G-Man <laughs> with the contemporary expression. I love it. <laughs> Gerard trying to speed up the roll for the orange. Torrance, little fancy dribble. That was headed out of bounds and saved. Lynch Daniels into the front row. Nine and a half minutes to go in our first half. Tom Wormy, Mike Jaminski, and our outstanding ACC College Basketball Production crew with you from Syracuse, New York. Another three for the gate. Chandler Baker. And Woodward, the guy making things happen offensively out there, the, the pass out of the center position for that open look. Baker picked up the foul on the baseline. Colgate's now made five three-pointers in the game, Mike. Here's the look inside. We talked about the athleticism. In the crowd, you should stick your hand up so that the official scorer gets your number right. <laughs> and then bounce right to him. Good finish on both those baskets. Inbounds from Torrance. He got the double digits against Lehigh. Ten points for Torrance to match the jersey number and a career high. A lot of dribbling. Fall away. Halfway down and out for Torrance. He's trying to take advantage of Lynch Daniels, a smaller cover on him, but uh, that, no ball movement, just a lot of dribbling one on one. Five of 13 on threes for Colgate in the first half. Syracuse just two of seven, and Gerard has made both of those. And Williams, the contact and the foul for the Orange. First on Williams. Career game number 100, 1,000 rather, 426 for Coach Beheim chatting with Torrance on that sideline. Trust the assistants, Jerry McNamara, Adrian Autry, Alan Griffin going the other way, and Colgate picks up a foul. That's Lynch Daniels and his second. I mean, Woodward has the ball there and he got the turnover that time you don't want to he, he's not going to shoot from there and he's at least been reluctant to shoot up to this point but he's been a very good distributor so you just want to bother him be a, have active hands and disrupt passing lanes Gerard Mintz Copeland on the floor for the orange Monair Hema has come in as well number 55 Gerard from the baseline. Tapped out to Mintz. Guarded by Smith and bumped. Well, Hema just out there setting screens, but did a nice job tapping that ball back to recycle the possession. Benny Williams also remains in the game. Fifth team foul against Matt Langle's team. How about that? How about the extension through 2030? For Coach Langle. And well deserved. Yeah. Nice job security there, such as it is in this profession. Copeland too strong. Over the top. And a rim bender. Monir Hema. And that's where he's going to get his points. Uh, and so, and Syracuse has gotten back in this game on the offensive glass. Uh, you know, Benny Williams, a couple of second chance baskets, and now Hema. Hema, the transfer from Duquesne, played his high school ball at St. Benedict's High School in New Jersey. Out of the corner, Colgate's got another three. The Baker. And that was under duress, too. Uh, he had Hema bearing down on him. Good concentration on that. So that's six made threes in the first half for Colgate. Mint's high degree of difficulty. Baker came down with it. Richardson Rich thought about the three. Richard Richardson's been quiet in this game so far. Raiders keep it alive. Richardson. Yeah, but that's, you know, how many times do we see that? 
offensive rebound, defense scattered, you find your best shooter. So Richardson with that last three. 7.02 to go in our first half. Okay, honey, we really gotta go. Colgate up 30 to 18, 702, and they built this from the three-point line. Last year we talked about that win, 18 of 43 from behind the arc, and top so far in this game, seven of 16, 16 of the 22 field goal attempts have been threes, and it's been spread around. They've got uh, three guys have knocked down triples so far for the Raiders. Richardson leads the way with 10 points. He just made that last three. He's got a couple of three-pointers to his credit. It's a 12-2 run over the last three minutes for Colgate. We told you about Tucker Richardson, top of the broadcast. And pretty much top of the scouting chart as well, I would think, Mike, on each and every night. Especially in Patriot League play, but certainly tonight. And it's it's been it's, it's been a quiet 10 points. You know, up to only five field goal attempts for him. Very efficient. He hasn't really hunted his shot out there. He's let the offense come to him. So far this season, he's averaged almost 19 points per game. Now, that's Lee Cassell over by the scorer's table. He's joined by Jeb Hartness and Les Jones. And he's talking with Hartness right now. They're over by that scorer's table. Now, Les Jones will join them. We've got 7.02 to go in the first half. And there's going to be a, a lot of times this year, especially early, Jim Beheim going to be talking to his young players, coaching them, teaching them every opportunity. Well, Whatever the delay is, it's been rectified, and Syracuse has possession, trailing 30 to 18. Seven minutes to go in our first half. We talked about spread it around. Gerard is the only player for Syracuse to knock down a three so far. He's got two of them. Orange also had 30 points off the bench in the win against Lehigh last Monday. That's Williams. And I, you know what? He's feeling it now, and because they were Colgate was daring him to take that jump shot, uh, they were giving him all sorts of room. They may have to press out a little bit farther on him now. Williams shot 34 percent from the floor last season. Quick passing from the Raiders inside and to Thompson got free. You know, I, I love talking about centers. And uh, in the middle of that zone, uh, Mr. Woodward is having a very, very nice game. Three assists for him so far. That bounces off the tip. Edwards over the top. Couldn't get to it. And now Moffitt runs it up. Syracuse a shade below 33% so far from the floor. Colgate on target. Tucker Richardson. And they, you know, they can't be late getting to him. They just can't. I mean, you know, he's a guy that you can get, you can be late to the other four guys, not him. Now eight of 17 from beyond 22 feet, one and three quarter inches, and Mintz has a response with a three. First one of the uh, his career, I believe, to this point. But um, if he can expand that part of his game, he's going to be very dangerous. He did have 16 points against Lehigh Mike with six of nine from the floor and played 26 minutes. Here's the look. You see, uh, he's just so very creative. Good movement without the basketball. Good high-low action, which is very difficult against that zone normally. Ever since Richardson got that kind roll early in the game, the baskets opened up for him. Senior from Flemington, New Jersey. He's open again. That's deep. High rebound taken down by Edwards. And so you can tell that he, he didn't surprise nobody on the offensive glass, really, for Colgate. Getting back, getting their defense set, not wanting to giving up any transition points. Edwards digging in against two defenders. Got to the rim and got fouled trying to get through that double team. 
So Edwards to the free throw line. Records picked up his first and it personal. Was, it was a, and we haven't said Records' name a lot. He's a 13-point scorer for them. But for, for Jesse Edwards, that was a late double team, and it wasn't well it wasn't well executed because he was able to split it and get the foul. Double double against Lehigh. 18 points, 11 boards. Edwards. Senior from the Netherlands, Amsterdam. Substitution Colgate. Jeff Woodward back into the lineup. Keegan Records leaves. Edwards, the youngest of three very athletic brothers. Took to basketball. Had that injury, Mike. It was at Boston College. He did play 24 games last year, but after that wrist injury, could not return to the lineup for the Orange. And it was certainly a situation that they could not recover from and did not make postseason play. Yeah, it was a it was a very tough way for the Bayheim brothers to, to end. You know, but who who gets to write the fairy tale, you know? <laughs> it doesn't happen for a lot of people, and he stepped out of bounds. The entire Syracuse bench made the call. In fact, prior to last year, Mike, 51 consecutive winning seasons for this program. The All the way back to the early 70s. Yeah, I mean, we could do a two-hour show on, you know, what Jim Beheim and, and what this program has done under his tenure here. Gerard got it back in the corner outlet pass Baker one on one against Torrance Gerard grabs it Colbeck has been able to pick their spots and get out and run but they just haven't converted on those plays tempted alley-oop Torrance had to go to the floor to try to save it and then Mintz stepped in and created some contact with Richardson. That's the first foul on Judah Mintz. Colgate in front by 11 late in the first. A new kind of. The Colgate Raiders have had the lead for the better part of this first half with just under four minutes to go against the Syracuse Orange playing in just their second game this season after a win last Monday against Lehigh last year the Raiders came to the dome and won 100 to 85 to snap a 54 game losing streak in the series Mike you mentioned it the 18 threes they made last year they've got eight so far tonight Yeah, almost there and uh, bench points and uh, Lynch Daniels has nine of those and of the three threes off the bench for him uh, to that effort and also the offense really and running through Woodward eight assists on those made field goals as well so things, uh, things working very well for the Raiders right now this C2 game within a game you know if you're Colgate you've, you've got this nice lead how can you finish off this half what do you do in the last four minutes to keep that lead or uh, can Syracuse make a little run get some momentum Certainly wasn't the first win in the series for Colgate, which dates back to 1901. They've won 46 times, but haven't been able to string together victories against the Orange since the early 60s, Mike, when they won four in a row in the series. So I was looking back, uh, and a guy that I was actually drafted with, Kiki Vanderway, his father, Ernie, played here right after the war from 45 to 49. I was looking at some of the all-time leading scores. And then in the uh, 90s, a uh, guy named Donald Foyle was probably their most well-known player. Went Absolutely. on to an NBA career. Yep. Back and down Woodward. Too strong. And that's, you know what? It's, it's Syracuse wants him shooting the basketball instead of distributing like he's done so far. Down low on the baseline, and it looked like Edwards might have stepped out. Lee Cassell was right on top of the call on the baseline. Yeah, and Woodward doing a nice job getting him pushed underneath the basketball, or, you know, underneath the uh, backboard. He just ran out of real estate. By the way, both coaches were very generous with their time to chat with us prior to the game. Matt Lengel. Uh, very modest about his success realizes the temperamental nature of the game 
And Coach Beheim, what was the first thing he wanted to talk about, Mike, when I walked in the room with you? The uh, impact of he, the he, LIV. He wanted to talk about tour. golf. Yeah, he, he loves loved golf, loves it. He was actually, back in the day, he was the golf coach here while he was also the basketball coach. Played here, assistant here. Had a, actually, he used to come down to the Duke Children's Classic and played the uh, golf. Had a hole-in-one. Wow. <laughs> One year in the tournament. Amazing. Edwards high for the board. I work on the PJ Tour in the summer times, Mike, and he wanted to talk about golf. Well, right now he's focused on basketball. I can guarantee you that. With his team trailing, and we're going inside of three minutes in the first half. Williams behind the line. He just keeps, he's got those easy chippies first, and he just keeps moving farther and farther out. And for the first time tonight, the crowd's starting to get involved a little bit, Mike. After well, that Williams three. That Benny Williams offense, I think. And then number 15, you want an answer? And he just keeps talking about moving out. He just keeps moving farther and farther away from the three-point line. His third three tonight. Mince individual effort. Crowded area. Defender in the air, leaning in too strong. Edwards able to preserve the possession. Tough shot falling away. Raiders want to run. Disjointed play, turnover orange. Touchdown pass to Mintz and he couldn't catch up with it. Good idea, lacking the execution. Here's the, the, the little fill behind right there, and I'm sure in the scouting report, you know, he, he missed his only three in the first game against Lehigh, but that guy you know is proven from behind the arc. Benny Williams last season was one of 11 on three-pointers, Mike. Syracuse hoping it's a totally different story this time around in 22-23. Wow, Richardson again! And I mean, you know, Gerard was in the neighborhood, had his hand up, but I think that's where Richardson's size comes in. He can just rise up and shoot over him. Mintz. That three rattles out. He's, 16 points for Richardson. He's got the ball. Yeah, Judah Mintz is struggling one of six now. Moffitt. A little too much room to operate. Richardson, double clutch, doesn't matter. How about 15 he's in Maroon? Gonna, he's going to be shooting from the S pretty soon. Uh, and you just, you know, he's, you're not even thinking at this point. He's just, he's just reacting and letting the ball fly right now. You look out, he's a good three or four feet behind the line right there, almost getting to, in the Steph Curry range. Late hand up there. I mean, he's almost, you know, it, you almost have to give yourself up. You're going to stay in the zone and just find where he is. Tucker Richardson averaging 19 points on the season. This Colgate team played Wells College of Aurora, New York, nearby Aurora out of Division Three, on Sunday and won 93 to 60. They made 12 threes in that game. Richardson in that game led the team with 15 points lost at Buffalo to start the season where he had 22 points to lead the team 105 to go in our first half Richardson 19 points this you know we, we were marveling at the offense and you're holding it so far Syracuse sitting at 24 points so they're getting it done both ends of the floor Orange last year as a team, 45% from the floor. That was right in the middle of the pack in the ACC. So far, just 32% as a team. That will help the averages. It's Gerard. Third three of the game for Joe Gerard. Led the team with 19 points in their only game so far against Lehigh. Moffat able to catch it. Drive and dish. Gerard does well to close on Richardson right into the defending of Edwards. A yeah, better job. You drive him off the three-point line, make him try to finish inside. Second block for Edwards. Go, go, go. 
That's another thing. When Edwards went out, Mikey was second in the conference last year with almost three blocks per game. Thompson misfires, bounces to Torrance. Final 15 seconds of the first half. Raiders have built a 14-point lead. And Gerard a little casual right here with the clock running down. He's gonna do it himself. Steps into the three, front rim. So Raiders will go to the locker room, Mike, with a 14-point lead. And as a team, they shot 45%. So coming up at halftime, get a preview of the FIU NC State game. We'll go around the ACC and have your first half highlights to back games in this series, Mike, since the early 1960s. When they won in 1962, here in Syracuse, it was up at Manley Fieldhouse. <laughs> well, uh, two things for Syracuse. Let's see if uh, Judah Mintz can get things going offensively, getting into the lane, and uh, they've got to find number 15, Mr. Richardson, and try to calm him down. This is Williams hanging, bounces out. Williams was four of six shooting in the first half with nine points. Opening moments of the second half. So glad that you're with us for ACC basketball on the Syracuse University campus. Another three for Colgate, Mike. This time it's Ryan Moffitt. Uh, on the bottom of the on the bottom of the zone, too, Keegan Records set a little screen to give him an extra count to get a look at the three. Moffitt's got his first three of the night. Edwards ran into the double. Mintz carving his way in. Mintz challenged the defense and laid it in. Moffitt went for the steal, came up empty, and that uh, gave Mintz a wide open lane to the rim. Orange going to have to overcome a 14 point halftime deficit in these next 18 minutes and 50 seconds. And that's the thing. It, it's a nice job. They're, they're trying to make Woodward shoot the basketball. Edwards the rejection. Fourth block of the night, Edwards. Gerard. Kind of got caught in the air there, Mike. Well, and, uh, but Richardson tall enough, he is really tracking Gerard. It's the hustle by Richardson to go to the court and get it. Kick against the orange. So you go for the if you go for the steal there, you've got to get it. But uh, this guy's got some great stuff in the lane, finishing with his offhand. Eight points for Mintz, three of eight shooting. He's got a three-pointer to his credit as well. I think he's instead of settling for jump shots, he's got to do that. Attack the rim, get into some sort of rhythm, then he can start moving his game outside if he wants. Twelve made threes for Colgate. Syracuse is connected on five threes. Miss Fire Smith. Bell. Early jump shot with no board coverage. Chris Bell, freshman in the lineup for the Orange. Smith from the free throw line. See, again, Woodward, make him finish in there. He gets everybody down and just creates a great little jump shot for Braden Smith. 20 points in his first collegiate start of his career against Buffalo in 29 minutes and he averages almost 13 per game small sample size for Colgate playing in its fourth game in nine days for that matter just the second of the season for the orange Williams another three attempt wide of the intended target yeah that shot not falling so far in the second half for Benny Williams and uh, Richardson is staying he is staying really close to Gerard not letting him get a rhythm Colgate working on an early season two game winning streak. Gerard stepping in the passing lane. Brings it up, crosses it over. Lost the handle out of bounds, and that's off of Gerard. Had good intentions on the drive, just lost the handle. But, you know, if you're Colgate, I mean, you'll accept forcing him into being a driver. Uh, you don't want him teeing it up from three. Make him prove himself inside. Torrance back into the lineup for the Orange. Eight turnovers in total after Gerard lost it out of bounds. 
Full court pressure. Gerard taps it, and that went off of Colgate. He went after it with Smith. It went out of bounds. Caught the Raiders a little flat-footed on that full court pressure. That's their sixth turnover of the game. Can the Orange capitalize on that turnover? Trailing 49-32, 16.50 to go in regulation. Edwards was looking for the rim. Spun off, went out of bounds. It's going to stay at this end of the floor. Les Jones all over the call, awarding the basketball to the Orange. I like the aggression by Edwards trying to get the finish, just couldn't get the dunk to go. They're just, they're, they're looking for a spark here somewhere. See if Gerard can provide that spark on the handle. Foul on the way up. Lynch Daniels picking up his third personal. And that's the thing, Tom, defensively, I mean, Syracuse in that first half only six free throw attempts, so they haven't been going to the line either. Gerard at the line, 88% last season from the line. While we have a second, a message from Works Nitro. Meet Works Nitro, powerful tools for any project with gas-like power without the gas. Fueled by PowerShare batteries to give you the power to outperform. So Gerard, Gerard, who made all five of his free throw attempts in the win against Lehigh, went to the line 73 times last year and made 67 of them. Richardson extending the range. That might have been the deepest three attempt for him in the game. Goes out of bounds on the baseline and stays with Colgate. That according to Jeb Hartness. Not a popular call inside the dome, Mike. <laughs> Raiders basketball. Lynch Daniels put the shoulder down. Offensive foul. His fourth. Nice anticipation on that play. And uh, Lynch Daniels, who had a big first half for him off the bench. See, again, they're just uh, driving in Torrance. A nice job anticipating that drive, getting a body in front, moving his feet. Get the call. Lynch Daniels had nine points in that first half. Gerard in rhythm. Ripping the ropes for the orange and not for a lack of effort from Richardson defensively. That was a tough shot Four made threes Joe Girard tapped it away two on one chance Mince Girard bounces off Throws it up from the corner And that was halfway down and out Smith, Moffitt. How about Moffitt with a three? Well, this this team is so good at finding guys out on the perimeter. You know, and with the focus on Richardson, they're going to be looks for other guys. 13 threes for Colgate. That'll stay down for Williams. Now they attack with pressure after the make. Skillfully broken by Smith. Inside of 15 minutes to go in regulation. Turnaround Thompson. Basically uncontested, Mike, on the turnaround. Well, and I th he's more of a scorer inside there than Woodward is. So they're going to have to, he can knock down that shot. 60% shooting from the field in his first three games. Mintz twisting and missing. Acceleration and elevation, and he came up empty. They try to put it up top to Thompson. The ball ends up with Richardson. And he rattles home a three. You Tucker know, Richardson. And, you know, Tom, not a great break. And it just turns out well for Colgate and Richardson wide open on that mistake. And a timeout, Syracuse. A career high six made threes for Richardson. This coach has a conversation with Mintz. 
Colgate fighting for this opportunity. And Richardson is on the money. Ridiculous 54% from beyond the arc. They've connected 14 times for three pointers. Syracuse is 6 of 17 from three point range. Tucker Richardson, 22 points. He's our Hardy's star to watch tonight. And that's a pretty good pick, Mike Jaminski. Well, he's done everything in that league. Rookie of the year when in his first year in conference, an all conference player, the preseason player of the year this year, living up to that right now and doing all that in just 25 minutes, Tom. But, uh, you know, terrific. And he's also rebounding, got three assists as well. So doing everything out on the floor. The 22 points just too shy of his career high of 24. We thought we talked about the 18 threes they made last year as an eye popping number. They may go past that in this game. Well the 18 was second most in school history. The record for Colgate in program history is 19 made threes. And we're inside of 14 minutes to go in the second half. This is Mintz trying to create and he lays it in. That's a nifty move Mike. Yeah no he's got he's got stuff. He can get to the rim off the dribble. But the, then the thing that the Syracuse that Jesse Edwards has been very quiet in this game. He's got four blocks but four rebounds and only four points so far and he hasn't got many touches. Thompson turnaround. I, again I, I think that Syracuse they're going to cover up the three point shooters. They'll let him operate offensively in the paint area and take their chances with those shots. Gerard and Williams in a double digit scoring for the orange Gerard with 14 Williams with 11 on 5 of 10 shooting shot clock is down to 8 Mince hits this he's had the last four now for the orange from the mid range game now starting to creep back into it 57 43 after trailing by 14 at halftime. Moffitt catch and release Thompson fighting for it save Torrance nice recycle and that's the good look this Colgate has had that when they've thrown over the top cross court entry Edwards as Mike mentioned just four points in the game had to kick it out Torrance Williams Foul on the play against Colgate. Records picked up his third. 57 43, the lead for the visiting Raiders. between these two teams goes back to 1901 and time now for the Continental Tire game recap and it involves Tucker Richardson for sure G man 22 for him and uh, you know the thing is if you look at the numbers Colgate ridiculous from three point range <laughs> but six of 17 from two so you know they're gonna have to just guard the three point line give up some shots maybe give up some layups and then get right here for the last 12 20 of this game get to the free throw line stop the clock muddy the game up a little bit score from there first trip to the line tonight for Benny Williams Williams only attempted 21 free throws all season long last year and then uh, you you know you get to the line you can set up that full court trap Intense defending from Torrance, the Syracuse native, number 10 in white. Back out to Baker. They got it back. Yeah, it just, Woodward. You got to get a body. You know, that's a rebound you have to come up with. Woodward dropped it low. Found the open man, Thompson. High low, you know, he's been so, so good out there. 
And then you get Thompson who's come in and uh, even though records not having a great scoring night number 30 is giving you a nice boost. Raiders maintaining that 14 point advantage that they had at halftime 44 30. Shot clock is down to 10 for the orange and mints. Shook the defender hit the shot free from mints. There you go. Maybe that's the spark that this crowd was looking for. Mints all of a sudden waking up offensively. Nice to see a lot of sometimes a freshman can't put a bad half behind him, but uh, Judah Mints playing nicely here. Crowd still murmuring about the move by Mints. And at the other end, Moffitt cans a three. Fifteen threes in the game for Colgate. Gerard, angular rebound to Moffitt. Knocked away and Mitz grabs it. Three Syracuse Orange players in double digits. Torrance, Gerard. Tried to give it to Edwards. That is off of the Raiders. Diving attempt there from Chandler Baker. Well, here's the look in a uh, little shake. I think that was more of a trip than anything, but whatever it gave Mitz a great look <laughs> at the rim. And then Colgate, as they've done all afternoon and night, answer with a three. Beheim. Technically, Mike sitting on 999 tonight. Asterisk. <laughs> 9.99, but uh, you know, for all in the basketball world, it's uh, 11.00. 35 times of the NCAA tournament, 10 times in the last 13 years, 58 tournament wins. That's fourth all time as well, Mike. 42 seasons of the 46 with winning teams. 2003 national champs win against Kansas. And Roy Williams, who was also on that list. Missed from Mintz, out of bounds. Stays with the orange. Drew Mintz looking to take this game over offensively for Syracuse. Coach Beheim at the Final Four and National Championship in 87 and 96 as well, and then breaking through in 03 with Carmelo Anthony and Jerry McNamara, current assistant coach. And the national title back in 03. That heartbreaking jump shot by Keith Smart. You had to bring it up. 87 against Indiana. Lost to Kentucky in 96. Five trips to the Final Four. Did it most recently in 2016. Also lost in the national semis back in 2013 to Michigan. An amazing career. Shows no signs of slowing down as well. Gerard trying to heat it up. That's over top of backboard. That'll be Colgate basketball. Now he's he's really the one guy you want to lock in on. I, you know, even though Mince has knocked down a three in this game, I think you'd prefer that. And that's going to be an offensive foul on Woodward. Good job, Gerard, selling that on the pressure. Second foul on Woodward. Here's the look and that's and you know he didn't really have to do that. I mean it's an automatic lob and he's got the big size advantage over Gerard to just let that right hand get the better of him. Chance for the orange the closest they've been is 12 in this second half. Last time within double digits you have to go back to the first half at the 741 mark so they need to chip away and do it fast. If they want to get back in this one Mintz. So the court, the arrow favors the Raiders. Or was a timeout granted? Yeah, I think he. And I was. I'm never a big fan of that play. I think they, you know, they. But he, you burn a timeout. To I think a timeout is more important than a possession. So with 9:33 to go, the orange Mike. It's saying zero yeah. on, on the on the timeout on our. Stat board here. Okay, we'll double check that one for you, but you want to stay tuned for the fast break. It's presented 
by your local Ford dealer. We're getting confirmation last time out. Utilized by the orange. We'll keep an eye on that for you here in the in the timeout inside the dome opened up back in 1980. How about the refurbishments to this place Mike they've really really done a great job with it. They're going to bring in seats and replace the metal benches as well. Well I think it's it's beautiful from the outside and any aerial view that we've seen from it and I'm frankly shocked early on when you talked about your dorm room and there's <laughs> there's got to be some sort of plaque there commemorating no. that isn't there no plaque little microphone or no. something always yeah. great to be back on campus with the <laughs> g-man though and i spent uh, seven wonderful years here mike oh no i'm sorry it was just four <laughs> john you got the john belushi plan? yeah yeah <laughs> seven years of college down the drain <laughs> not down the drain though no, you're, no. you're buying the mic no By the way, there's six million pounds of structural steel on the roof. Looks like a roller coaster up there, the support steel design. Williams aggressively against two defenders. The foul was called. Thompson picked it up. Now, the, the good news is, too, one more foul by Colgate, and uh, Syracuse is going to be in the bonus for the rest of the game. Syracuse has played to this point no foul so far in the half. Williams now three of three from the line. But I think this is this is the uh, recipe for the orange. Get to the free throw line, knock them down, be efficient, and get into that trap. That would be nine of twelve now from the free throw line. Inside of nine and a half minutes to go, it's a twelve point lead for Colgate. Substitution Syracuse Monair Hema comes in Edwards to the bench long pass to Richardson he is free and he lays it in and the foul Mintz was trying to get back defensively Richardson had a step for Colgate normally your big is back playing center field but Hema was chasing guys around and uh, nice little seam route that time Nice job throwing over the top too and that's what Benny Williams a tall guy right in your face too to make that play. So Richardson to the free throw line now. The 24 points has tied his career high. Can't finish off the old school three point play. 14 point lead Colgate matches the halftime lead. 44 30. They've had an answer every time Syracuse has made a little bit of an inroad. Williams able to save it. Mintz with a glance at the clock. Gerard barks out the commands. Only five on the shot clock. Torrance angling in. And he plays the angle off the backboard. Torrance able to calculate the physics. Up ahead, there's an open man underneath. Out of bounds, lost out of bounds by records. Keegan records, he was looking at the rim before he ever caught the ball. Now it's just he had a couple of defenders bearing down on him. That sped things up a little bit. Syracuse very, so far in this, in this pressure, they've gotten beaten over the top some. On this possession, they can cut the lead to 10 or with a three, get it to single digits. Haven't done that. Since the early stages of the first half, Gerard releases and misses. Richardson waiting for reinforcements. Patience from the Raiders. Three-pointer's been the difference tonight. They're 15 of 29 from beyond the arc in the three-point airspace. They drop it low. Records. This time he's able to hold on, and a foul is called. They'll give it to Hema, the sophomore. High low action. Woodward, they, you know, when he doesn't have anything out on the perimeter, he looks down low on the baseline. Records getting behind everybody on the de defensive end. In the game, Colgate just three of five from the free throw line. <laughs> They're better from three than they are from the free throw line. <laughs> Move that line back. Coming back in, it's Edwards. 
Keegan Records, senior. From Rhode Island. Like I said, he's only he's not been a big part of the scoring. Four points for him. He's averaging almost 14. Williams tried to drop it low. No, like no Edwards. Yeah, no real angle out there to make that pass. Even though, you know, on that turnover, at least you can set your defense and, and pressure the ball a little bit. The other win this season was on the road at Brown for Colgate in Providence, Rhode Island last Thursday, 77-68. They beat Wells College Division Three on Sunday, 93-60. Lost to open the season at Buffalo. Richardson. Gerard is on him, gives up a couple of inches. At the rim records. He read it well. He knew that Smith shot was off the mark. And so many times the offense will go up and take a chance on that. Defensive player a little reluctant. He doesn't want to get any a goaltending call right there. But uh, we're going to give him an assist on that, I think. Quick ball movement. Mintz got two men in the air. Torrance with eight on the shot clock. Fancy dribble. Edwards down the lane contact. Woodward was defending 55 in Maroon. That'll be his third personal. So the foul against the Raiders. They've got the 68-52 lead late in the second. It's time for the fast break presented by your local Ford dealer. Early on in the ACC season, and we get a look at the preseason poll. Keeping in mind, Mike, North Carolina number one in the nation, Duke and Virginia also in the top 25. At North Carolina, huge expectations. Their fan base coming off that national championship game last year. Everybody back uh, working Pete Nance into the rotation. Duke, great freshman class as usual. Virginia, Ben Vanderplas, another portal guy who can help them. Miami getting Isaiah Wong back makes them older and stronger. And Miami made a run to the Elite Eight just a season ago. We've got more basketball coming up next. We head south to Raleigh as FIU battles NC State. Number zero back for the pack in 2023. Sophomore guard Turk Wavian Smith leads the team in scoring as NC State and its high octane offense currently on display early on in the season. Stay tuned as the Wolfpack and Panthers continue our double dose of ACC non-conference basketball in November. And that takes us right to the preseason first team selections led by Armando Baycott of North Carolina and his teammate Caleb Love. Yeah, Baycott a double-double machine. Caleb Love a big-time scorer in big-time situations. NC State getting Smith back, which they didn't know. Jeremy Roach, one of the older guys on the Duke team, and Isaiah Wong. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we built the new Ford Bronco Sport for everyone with seven available go modes and a camera with off-road views. It's built for America. Kick off your weekend with college football on Valley Sports. The ACC is out to prove it's a conference to be reckoned with. Are you kidding me? ACC football all season long on Valley Sports South, presented by your local Ford dealer. So coming up right after our game, we're going to Raleigh, North Carolina to Quavian Smith. Leading the ACC in the early going for 2022-23. Eric Collins and Brian Oliver will take you through that one. Scheduled 9 p.m. Eastern start. Panthers and Wolfpack. Here it's Edwards at the free throw line for the Orange. So glad that you're with us tonight, Tom Wormy. Mike Jaminski, the All-American from Duke in our outstanding ACC college basketball production crew with you. The Hall of Famer, Jim Beheim looking for an answer after the loss last season to visiting Colgate. Syracuse had won 54 in a row in this series. Copeland's back in for the Orange. Torrance to the bench. Yeah, I mean, you know, we talk about the mid-majors and uh, this team may be above that label in Colgate, and it's a very challenging. Get the turnover by Mintz in the open floor. Great defensive play, just man to man. So the lead is back to 12. That's the closest the Orange have been in the second half. They had a possession. 
Well, they had a chance to get it to 10 or single digits, but Gerard misfired on a three just a couple of minutes ago or inside of seven minutes now. Richardson, watch out. Yeah, and only, uh, but again, you get the miss and you give up the offensive rebound. And for Richardson, only five points in this half, so they've kept him relatively quiet. A three. Lynch Daniels. Yeah, he's been he's been uh, chippy with the crowd a little bit there, but he's backed it up with some three point shooting and then the turnover. 16 points for Lynch Daniels. Wide open from the corner. Another three. Brayton Smith for the Raiders. Boy, they have answered every single run by Syracuse in this game. Had it down to 12, just a heartbeat ago. And Colgate comes up with back-to-back -back threes. Lynch, Daniels, and Smith on successive possessions. Mintz had to flip it over to Gerard, and now Edwards, Williams, Copeland. Look like everybody touched the basketball, unable to harvest points, and Colgate calls a timeout. 74 56 543 to go in regulation here's the look inside and uh, boy I talk about a, a you know nice addition off of the bench four of six shooting 12 points for him bench 24 to 4 advantage in this game for Colgate and it's not like they play to cast the thousands either They've made 17 threes. They made 18 in the upset win last season inside the dome. Fifty percent from three point distance. Well, and the thing now too with Syracuse, they're sitting with only two team fouls, so they're going to have to go some. If they're going to have to, you know, stop the clock and get uh, put Colgate on the line, you know, I think at this point you almost sell out and try to go for the steal almost on every possession here, unless you can get a really strong early double team. Largest lead right now, 18 points for Colgate. Thanks to that man. This is a North Carolina Amber Alert for a child abduction. The Wake County Sheriff's Office is searching for a Bentley Gunner Stancil. Bentley is a nine-year-old white male, approximately four feet, seven inches tall, weighing 75 pounds. He has brown hair and hazel eyes. Bentley was last seen wearing a long sleeve black hoodie, a black school backpack, blue jeans, and black and white sneakers. The abductor is unknown. Bentley was last seen traveling east on Wendell Boulevard on foot from the Hardy's restaurant in Wendell. If you have any information regarding this abduction, call the Wake County Sheriff's Office immediately at 919-796-3317 or 911 or star HP. This is an Amber Alert. turn 45 this would be quite the early birthday present for Matt Lengel the 12th year head coach for the Colgate Raiders who went 23 and 12 last season with a new staff too we talked about that he's got some new faces they've got two new guys on the sideline Cameron Crocker Trey Montgomery These guys got have pin ties but he's got to coach his staff up as well as uh, coaching his team up yeah Lengel graduated from Penn in 2000 Edwards Copeland back to Edwards and he rolls it in 
And that one, good job of, of not, again, making it a three-point play opportunity. If you get the layup, you can, you know, let it go. Shot clock to 10 for Moffitt on the baseline. Got out of the double team. Smith and records. Smith. Lynch Daniels. I missed everything. Lawrence has to hurry up. Well, not a lot of, you know, Torrance was way ahead of the crowd and then just a, a careless pass and a turnover. 74 58 328 on the clock uphill climb late for the orange to build by CPI security it's Benny Williams for the orange Mike Jaminski yeah I mean they've, they've had some shot blocks in this game uh, five total for Syracuse but there hadn't been a ton of action inside and uh, of course Benny Williams nice job on the offensive glass I mean he's He's had a very good game statistically 15.7 rebounds for him 15 points a career high for Benny Williams shattered his old career high might be in a losing effort tonight Mintz he got tangled up there with Braden Smith that's the third foul on Mintz. Seventeen of thirty five and three point shooting for Colgate. Just up the road in Hamilton New York Mike fifty nine miles southeast of the dome. Small town but uh, they got a big time program there small enrollment under three thousand students. The group that came to the dome tonight though is ready to play early season basketball. But keep in mind the orange had only played one game prior mm -hmm. to tonight as well not trying to make any excuses certainly but uh, you know against this defense and uh, this uh, opposing teams don't always have a great shooting night in this building but you take 35 threes and knock down half of them you're going to be in most games just 36 percent shooting as a team for the orange in this one up to this point with 245 to go on the clock mints the high archer and he's going to the free throw line yeah, we talked about the last thing you want to do and that that was a tough finish in and of itself but don't stop the clock and give him an opportunity you know to get on the line that's four on records he'll get, go to the Colgate bench and Mintz is at the free throw line freshman from Fort Washington Maryland out of Oak Hill Academy Malta Wilson Virginia Old school three point play. Again, the closest the Orange got here in the second half was 12. Right now it's 13. Raiders are going to use that clock. Woodward backs it out. Lynch Daniels. Edwards high for the rebound as he secures it up to Torrance. You can see uh, Colgate has, has been so good getting back defensively. Alley oop, Edwards. Yeah, nice finish there. So now two minutes remaining. 11 point game. Still time. This is the closest the orange has been all half. Kick out Woodward Richardson. That could be some punctuation right there, Mike. Yeah, Jansky. yeah. And you know, it's it's funny they've maintained that lead without him being a huge part of the offense. Certainly, a lesser of a role than he was in the first half. It's 18 threes. Williams offensive board and the putback. That's that's back to back years coming into this building and putting up 18 threes. But a much a much more efficient percentage this year than last year. Now Richardson. Another three for Richardson. 
27 points setting his career high tonight seven made threes that's also a career high and nine of 14 overall last year it was Jack Ferguson leading the way for Colgate with 25 points not surprisingly those 27 from Richardson leading all scorers in our game tonight as we close in on the final minute Raiders throw it out of bounds there's a pulse it might be faint but there's a pulse yeah, not bad 13 turnovers on the game for Colgate so that a decent number on the road Woodward to the bench for Colgate really a big part of what they did this evening they'll number, play number 55 yeah they'll play Friday against Duquesne Mike first Patriot League game at the end of December against Loyola Maryland Mintz threads the pass knocked away from Williams expression of frustration and Williams fouls Moffitt had to with 39 seconds left on the game clock and the folks who made the trip from Hamilton New York applauding their Raiders it's like half the town came up for this game and well worth the trip I mean two years in a row after losing 54 in a row in the series and they're on the threshold of doing it for a second straight year score holds they go to three and one as well early on Orange will drop to one and one after the win against Lehigh last Monday they'll play Saturday against Northeastern four o'clock out of the corner three ball corner pocket from Moffitt that's 19 threes to tie the school record miss from Taylor Torrance got it back and there's the whole night right there in a nutshell yeah no just not being able to finish at the rim and then uh, you know they, they just couldn't match the three-point shooting for the Raiders terrific win on the road Torrance hits a three not going to be nearly enough 80 to 68 for the second straight year Matt Lengel and the Raiders come to the dome and leave with a win it was impressive and, and you know the thing Tom for me is that you know they jumped on Syracuse early got a lead but whenever the Orange tried to make a little bit of a run and cut the lead down they had an answer for it and uh, you know